Hello, Steve White, Steve White's 89. I'm continuing my Stephen King marathon. I'm doing the Children of the Corn series. I'm going to watch most of them, try and watch all of them. But the main, of course, one was Stephen King's original. So that actually came out in March 1984, which is it's a lot older than I thought. I felt like it was a newer film. But um, it did fairly, fairly well, actually. It only cost $800,000, which is not a lot. It's not much more than the original Halloween. And um, it made $14.6 million, which is pretty good considering how much it cost. And I doubt they spent a lot of money on publicity or anything, or promotion. Uh, probably wasn't showing in a lot of theatres either, but um, that's pretty well. I didn't realise it did that well, but that would explain why it ended up being a franchise. Now, the original story was published um, in Penthouse by Stephen King and then in Night Shift, and then made into this film. It's a fairly simple story, which is, I guess, how they made it for, you know, $800,000. Um... It's basically Linda Hamilton and some guy, uh, Peter Horton, who I have never seen anything before, travelling through Nebraska, listening to all the wonderful religious rhetoric on the radio, and then um, they hit a child who has run out on the road who's had his throat slit in the cornfield. Basically, he was trying to escape the town of um, Gatlin, and he didn't get very far. Now, Gatlin was a normal town, but there was a religious sect led by a kid called um, Isaac, and Malachi, and they basically coordinated the kids to kill all the adults three years before the events of this film. Um, they poison most of them, they just, anything they do to kill them, they basically, one Sunday after church, they just decide to kill all the adults, and then rule the town. And they do that for three years, and I guess they keep, oddly enough, they keep some adults alive, like the guy who runs the gas station is kept alive all that time. Um, the lady who actually helps kill everyone in the in, in like the cafe and the restaurant in the town, she's initially left alive. I'm not quite sure what that's about. They don't really explain that. But um, eventually they kill the gas attendant anyway. Um, and these two, basically, they try and work out where this kid came from, what happened. They try and find the town. They go into the town. They see that it's basically a ghost town. They, they realize it's sort of being run by the children, and they try and get out, um, it's not easy because I, I'm not sure why that they want they want to sacrifice um, Linda Hamilton and they want to kill the guy. So I remember the film. I remember the ending being most of the film because I watched it when I was fairly young, uh, which is really weird watching it as an adult now. Because when I first watched it, I was a kid, and I related differently to it. Whereas now I find it a lot more scary, and also the religious element is a lot more scary because you realise in America just how um, unhinged a lot of the religious um, sects in America are and how many areas are just totally overwhelmed and dominated by religion and it just makes this film seem a lot more not realistic but or believable just a lot more um, just I feel like it could happen today um, which is not something I ever thought when I watched this 10 15 years ago or when I was a kid um, so it's pretty, it's pretty scary, really, when you think about it. And when you listen to the radio, they listen to the radio and they're making fun of the religious people and that. It was kind of a joke back then. And it's not a joke now. It's kind of scary. The film is scarier now, which I wasn't expecting. And also watching it as an adult, looking at kids and realising just how uncontrollable and unfathomable that they are. Like, you do not know what they're thinking, what they're planning, how they perceive the world, how... It's... it's it's, it's just actually really scary. I understand what, now why the film probably did so well, because it probably did scare the hell out of adults. Um, but yes. So eventually they, they run across two kids who haven't really, younger kids who haven't really um, engaged in the cult, and they help them to escape. Eventually Linda Hamilton's caught, but they escape again, and eventually they realise that they have to burn the cornfields to destroy the the devil is literally a demon in the cornfields that kills Isaac and brings him back as some sort of possessed monster. And they eventually just burn the field. And they do appear to have won. Um, and they leave the town with the kids. And all's happy. And yeah, um, there's, that's, that's, that's it. I was kind of surprised. I thought there'd be more of a lead into the sequels. It's very much its own film. It's a very simple film. Uh, it's mostly filmed on location, just in the cornfields and in the town. And it's really just, for the most part, two people wandering around trying to work out what's happening with the town while the kids are sort of hiding. 
and then the kids are helping them trying to work it out and trying to avoid being captured and killed by the others and then of course they realize that they have to actually do something about it and they burn the cornfield it's fairly simple um, but it's very effective it's very creepy it's very disturbing when you actually think about it and as I said as I've gotten older it makes unfortunately more sense and as things have gotten more crazy in the US it seems more realistic so it was a much different experience watching it now as an adult than when I watched it when I was younger but I'm going to go and watch the other films because um, I've got the th two and three and I think they made like five of them I've got to try and work out where the other ones are and where I can view them but I'm going to go feel free to share like comment subscribe let me know what you think Linda Hamilton was good the film is actually better than I remember, but it's also scarier than I remember. Bye.